Hey everybody, uh, welcome to Mike's Master Classes. I'm here with the incredible John Stoll, and we're here trading some solos and ideas about some incredible standards. And John, how are you doing today? Hey Cheryl, great to be with you. And we, you and I have had the pleasure of playing a little bit together over at Berkeley just informally, but we haven't talked together in this setting, and I'm very happy to be here with you today. Me too. So uh, we were talking about um, a ballad, a standard, um, and how about Embraceable You and G? Fantastic tune. I love it. And this one is, you know, I would say typically ballads don't come up at jam sessions so often, but certainly for recordings or for gigs uh, to, to feature some ballads in the, in the repertoire as a part of a performance, I think is great. And ballads are actually quite challenging to play for a number of reasons. We could talk a little bit about that. Absolutely. But I think to have some, you know, to have eight or 10 ballads in your repertoire is a great idea. Or to write a ballad. You've probably written some ballads. Mm -hmm. I have a few also. Yeah. That's good old, you know. Yep. But, but you can start to add yep. on that, because, right? You know, like whatever you start, you could add the seventh Absolutely. or take advantage of different sounds or even a. Absolutely. Yeah, open strings, I agree, especially with a ballad where we have enough time on each chord. I mean, even at a faster tempo, if we have enough time over a change, open strings can work great. So typically, you know, I'd like to get your take on this too, but in general with open strings, unless it's a note in the bass, I'm focusing on one of the top three open strings. Mm -hmm. So you just mentioned a nice G major where we might put the F sharp and the G together, or I can play Lydian dominant stuff like an A tri, it can work. Mm -hmm. But that means that any kind of a, any kind of a, any kind of a, a G major, any one of those three open strings could potentially work. So you can take a simple voicing like this and just, just take the open string in. It's going to give you the sixth and the third and the tonic. So any of these shapes, essentially, um, to take a take a, a fretted note away, and then you have the open string. See how it works. Yeah. Well, you. I don't know if you ever knew my friend. Uh, I'm sure you met him, Jack Pezzanelli. So, of course, I know Jack. So, so you know, Jack and Jack is such a vibrant character. And he said, you know, he hung out with Joe Pass a lot. And I always, you know, mm. I, this because I'm going to ask you this too. Like, you know, what. What did you learn in that lesson or what did you practice or whatever? So he said he'd get together and play with Joe and then they, and Joe would kind of, you know, kind of wait till Jack just started to get in, started to burn. And then Joe would yell at him, play the melody right now. <laughs> you know, and, and the thing was, he would, you know, because that's the way Joe played. The melody was always right there. Like it wouldn't matter mm -hmm. where it was in the phrase, you know, he, well, everything he played was in context of the tune. Mm -hmm. And of the melody, you know what I mean? And so that's Absolutely. a good thing to do. Like if you can even think about that when you're practicing, like you think you're just getting ready to burn into something, just say, play the melody now. Where are you? Where are you in this? You know, like it's sort of a really deep awareness to develop as you're playing. I agree. 